Hello everyone, welcome back to another Space Engineer script tutorial. Now, I have a few requests for making uh, numbers that sort of increment and decrement, whatever you know, sentence you have. So in this here tutorial what I've done is I've made a combination lock that opens up a safe door. So let me just give you a quick tutorial on how this here works. So the code for opening the door is 2143. So we're just going to see as we press those buttons it increments. And one, two, three. So that there resets back to zero, 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 zero. Our door opens and we can go into our safe. And I'm gonna quickly show how that works. Okay, so first things first, if you're gonna build this here, you need to have your airtight doors in like say a group and then put that group into a timer block and set it to open. So no, whenever you uh, the timer block is triggered, it opens those uh, group of doors. Second thing you will need is an LCD screen. Now you don't need it this big, this is only for a tutorial. But make sure you call it something like LCD door lock as it's shown there. Then you need a program block. Now the program block doesn't need to be a specific call, just have whatever you want. But in here I just call it program block door lock. And then what you need is your timer block. And your timer block is called timer underscore door lock underscore start. And that's just telling it to start the, the process. Then you'll need a button panel. And your button panel just needs to be set up with certain actions. And it is just running arguments to that program block. So I'll give you a quick tutorial on how that's done. So you right click, click run. And we are going to pass the command button panel door lock one into this. And then this is button, that's BPDL2, BPDL3, BPDL4. And whenever we hit enter, there we go, see the way it goes up to one, that goes to one, that goes, and this here. And if we go cycle it all the way up to nine, so we go nine, it goes back to zero, and I'll show you how that works here now. So you will go into your program block and you will need this here, 68, 69 lines of code but there's quite a lot of spaces in between just to help break it up, it's easier to read but I'll go through it in depth here and now. So what you will have is a user set combination and as, as you can see here we have the codes with 2143, that is the code to open up the door. And then what we need to do is we start off the function down below, so this is pretty much reset and everything so we're just... The, uh, the integers we're going to be using is W, X, Y, Z, that's just for the four buttons. W, X, Y, Z is the four buttons and we're going to be setting them to zero. Then we set up our string. So our string is for the LCD door text and we're going to be setting that to X, dot X, dot X, dot X. That's just, it's not really used in it, it's just to help sort of set it to something before we begin the program. Then we have our public run program. So this one here is just pretty much to run a loop every uh, uh, 10 game ticks, something like that, is, it'll run. I've done a previous tutorial on how that all works, but that's pretty much what it does. It runs 10, 10 times a second. And then we get into the public main void, which is pretty much what everything does in here. So what we have to do is we have to look out for the argument that gets passed into the program block. And as you see there, we have BPDL1, so those are your buttons. When those buttons are pressed, it's going to pass this here into the program block. And these cases pretty much are listening out for that button press. So what you're doing is you have a button press DL1 and you're setting the first combination to plus plus. So it goes from zero up to one. So that's whenever it runs this bit here. So when you press uh, that button, it's going to add on one to that, um, to that first combination. And we can actually set it to negative negative like this here. Do check code. And it'll actually go backwards. So well. So if we press this way, so now it goes minus one, minus two, minus three. Now we don't want to do that, we just want it to go up the way, so I'll go in here and change that back. So it's plus plus. So it's plus plus. And that's pretty much repeated the same way for the button uh, two, button three, and button four, where it's just x, y, and z, it's adding on. So x is the first block of number. Uh, sorry, w is the first one, x is the second one, y is, you could rename it, you could, you know, say call it, like say a combination one, combination two, combination three, whatever you want, just as long as it's repeated within the whole block of code. And then what you have to do is you have to tell it to run um, a program down below, which is pretty much this here, so public main run void, so this is going to run the, it's just going to check to see if the number is exceeding, say, nine. And it's going to check to see if your code is correct. So it just runs this bit down here. 
and if it doesn't, you know, it'll sort of go back up and run this here again. So all that there just runs through your four buttons, and then what it does is it calls, it tells to run this here a bit down below. So this is where things get a bit confusing, but you will re notice a few wee things here popping up that look the same. So what we're doing here now is we are looking for the timer block that is called door lock start. So that's our timer block over here to the right, over here on this side. And pretty much what we're doing is we're telling the game to look for that block and assign it to a name called timer block door lock underscore start. So that's all it's doing. It's looking for that block name and it's assigning it to this. Then this one under here is looking for the text panel. And we're calling the text panel LCD door lock. What? Uh, sorry, LCD door lock. And we're looking for that in the game. So as you've seen earlier on, it was called LCD door lock. And we're just looking for that in the game and assigning it to this. Then we have our if statements. Now, this is where you'll probably recognize where it's if it exceeds 9, it'll reset it back to 0. Because in combinations, you can't have any more than 10, which is from 0 to 9 can't have any more than 10. If you wanted to you could get it, you could go up all the way to 20 but just make sure you specify that if it's over say 9, reset it back to 0 so if you wanted 20, say like 19, look for 19 and whenever you hit 20 it resets back to 0, it's whatever you think but for combination locks it's typically from 0 up to 9 and we're just doing that at the same time just waiting to see if any of them exceed 0 oh, sorry, exceed 9 and reset them back to 0 and then we come to this main bit here, so this bit, this block of code here is looking for your combination. So what we've done is we're looking if C1 equals W and if C2 equals X, so pretty much what it's doing is checking to see if your combinations line up and that is using this up here above. So we can set our combination here, so we can do it again, we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, just for the talk's sake, so we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4. And the reason I've put it up here, it's easier to change than going all the way down into the code and changing that, so we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4. And pretty much what it's doing is, uh, if I go back down to it, so we'll have, does combination 1 equal 1? Does combination 2 equal 2? Does combination 3 equal 3? And does combination 4 equal 4? If it does, then what you want to do then is reset the combination back to 0, 0, 0, 0, and then activate the timer block, which is triggered now. You want to apply that action, which is the uh, timer block, and that's going to do whatever it has. It doesn't have to be doors, it's just activating the timer block, and as you know, timer blocks can pretty much do whatever you want. It's easier to run one of those instead of running like a load of other stuff. What you could do is you could tell this here to open those doors manually through code. But in my experience, you're just better running a timer block because then you can change it whatever you want. So you could have uh, activate lights, sirens, open the doors, maybe depressurize. You can do hundreds of thousands of different things by just running the trigger block on its own. And what we're doing down here at the very, very bottom is we are setting the text, so this is setting the text on the LCD. So what we're going to have is going to show W, which is the first combination, plus, and then we're going to put a dot in between it, then the X, and then we're going to put another dot between it, and then we're going to show the Y, and then we're going to show the Z, and then we're just putting these wee dots in between. So putting a plus on it is adding, you know, like, it's like blocks of strings, so it's joining strings together. Um, it's not adding them together as in, no, it's not like, say, 2 plus 2. If you do 2 plus 2, um, normally in your head it's 4, but in code if you do 2 plus 2, that would be uh, 22. So whenever you're setting a string, a string will uh, will just join them together. And then we have LCD door lock dot write text. So if you've seen the first tutorial, what you do is you do write text, and then you're setting the door lock text to whatever this here is. So this will be your W, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so as we change the combination back to 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll just do check code, okay, like this. Click run, and that resets everything. And once I press this here, it resets. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, There we go. 1, 2, 3, and 4 opens up the door. And that is pretty much it. Now, that code will be found on my website website will be linked in the description there you'll be able to copy and paste it into your world the only things you need to make sure is name it convention wise is that your LCD and your timer block and your button panel matches in the code and you can change it to whatever you want but just make sure that whenever you're changing you need to rename the uh, entities in this here so say for example if you had say a three combination locks on your ship or something um, and you didn't want to conflict with each other just make sure that you name the variables in a way that the name of convention follows like whatever it is for example if this here was say uh, door lock one then change your code to say door lock and then the one and change everything pretty much to that as well and 
do the same for your other door locks if you had door lock 2 make sure it's door lock 2 and then everything on the code follows that as well for things like your parameters uh, let me just go in here and edit for things like this here like c1 c2 and c3 better name of convention is to put door lock before that so if you put door lock before all these here say door lock 1 door lock 2 door lock 3 before all this here and same with here door lock 1 w door lock 2 x or whatever just make sure you put it in here because whenever it goes to check this here and this here it wants you need to make, make sure that it is you know it's all the proper name convention but i'm sure you probably know what i mean i'm just over explaining what it is but that is pretty much it so as you know scripts if you do follow the discord channel uh, scripts are going to be making a comeback um over here behind us is the next video um just a bit of a teaser this one here checks to see if the room is airlocked if it doesn't it sounds a siren and that's pretty much what that does it's very very basic but i will show that in the next video but that is pretty much for this here script tutorial if you have any comments any suggestions do drop them down in the comments below or visit discord channel that's linked in the description discord channel has a separate channel for script suggestions so if you've anything that you want uh, done just put it in there and i'll try and see if i can replicate it and then do it on youtube um, if you're enjoying the content, do consider subscribing and dropping us a like if you like what you see. It does help show what people are interested in the most and I'll try and focus on those areas a bit more in the future. But seeing as this here is a big demand, I'm just going to keep doing these here until we run out of ideas. But to be honest, with scripts and program blocks and, and timer blocks, the, it's just the possibilities are pretty much endless. And that is pretty much it. So, thanks again for watching. See you in the next one. I would like to give a massive shout out to the channel donators, you helped make these videos possible.